Hello and welcome to Stream Tabulous. Got a quick one today, and it's more about the Critter AI Diffusion, where I'm trying to do a little series on showing you the tips and tricks on how to use it. Uh, I'm still learning with it, so as I go and I learn uh, neat little things, I will pass them on to you. So what I want to look at today is control net and poses. So we want to look at creating something in the vision that we're actually imagining in our heads and giving that image the um, look that we're after rather than the AI randomly fully generating the image. So someone mentioned you're more like a uh, director when you're doing it. Uh, directors are artists which are um, explaining to someone what their vision is. And that might actually involve in standing in a um, position and showing them what you, they want the person to do. And we can do that with AI art as well. So we'll go over to the intro and then we'll get on with the show. And here we are in uh, Krita. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna uh, open up a new image. We're just gonna select A4, which this is gonna be a little bit big for um, the hardware that I'm running. Um, you're likely to have better hardware than me if it's the first time that you're watching one of my episodes. I am just running a GTX 1070. So if I can do it, many of you guys can. Um, we want to come up to image and we want to come down to scale to a new size and we're going to adjust this to a size which is better suited so i'm going to put seven six eight now you might think 512 is the way to go uh, because uh, a lot of the stable diffusion 1.5 models which is what i'll be using today are trained on 512 by 512 but when you're using 512 by 512 you may encounter compression and AI glitching more than you would have doing a more increased resolution. And that is because uh, AI consists of multiple uh, neuro networks to work. And as it has evolved, it has basically moved on to higher resolutions. So even the 512 is upscaled even though 512 is not really trained well for hands so sdxl is 124 and there are sdxl models on civet ai which are trained with 2k and even 4k images so you can get some really good trained models out there uh, a part of the training is also the language model and I will do a episode talking about um, Civity AI models, uh, what to look at when you're downloading and explain why some models are better than the others and uh, why it can be hit and miss. So I'm going to change this to my look, which is a model that I have trained and I've trained it on my digital uh, paintings that uh, I've done, which are uh, pretty basic due to the buggered arm and take me way longer than they should. Um, now, when you train a model, you might think it's going to copy that artwork, but AI is trained not to really do that. And due to the way it has multiple layers of AI for its neural net, um, it's, it's other training overwrites a lot of that original look that you have, which um, generates a new sort of look. Uh, you can get pretty good when you've got uh, close-ups and you're just training it on uh, faces alone. Um, I don't really do faces that well. So what I ended up with is a uh, better looking um, style than what I do, but it is unique nonetheless. So what we want to do here is we're going to put a model in and I use mannequins. If you look up mannequins on uh, Google, you can probably build up a nice asset file of mannequins. I actually would love to buy one of these and then I can pose it to whatever I want. We're going to insert the mannequin as a new layer. 
that is important. And then we're gonna come over and select transform layer. So we have our layer here and we can move it to whatever size we want. So I'm gonna move that down just like that. And I'll center that on the screen. I think it'd be handy having one of these because you could shoot it uh, with a white piece of paper in the background and pose it any way you like to um, really capture the direction that you're looking for, uh, the image that you're actually creating. And uh, I think that'd be a great thing. But, um, you know, if you're broke like I am, you can look up mannequins and download heaps of poses. And what I like about them is they there's no background, so there's nothing distracting when you're doing this technique. So drop your image in as a new layer, select transform, leave it on transform. And I find this is very important. If it's not on transform, I've found this not to work. I've selected my 1.5 model. We want to come over to add a control layer. Now it has already selected on my control um, image there. So we're going to come through and now change that from image to pose. So we've added our control layer. We've changed it to pose and we're on the model that we um, want to use for the final result. Now, if we come over and we click these stars here, it says generate a control layer from the current image. So we're going to click that and we're going to give it a moment and it's going to generate our control. So now we have our control image. It's going to render its images based on this control and only this control. So now we can come up here and we can uh, type in what we want. So we'll put this in uh, da, 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 and then we're going to hit generate. Now, because we have a control in there, we're going to get our image to um, look like what we actually want. So this gives us a lot of control and you can do this where you create a background and then you can drop your uh, model in and create um, the person on that. And then you can tell the AI to, um, you know, follow that background as well while it's actually uh, creating the image. So you can get a lot of control and really get the image that you're actually looking for. I don't want to go over in depth, baby steps to teach. And sometimes I uh, have gone overboard in the past. There we go. So we're still going to get some artifacts. So you may need a couple of renders to actually get what you're looking for. So we're going to generate a couple of images and we'll fast forward and we'll take a look at the uh, other results. And so we can see we're getting that constant uh, sort of stylish look. So it's, in my opinion, it's um, fantastic. And uh, it's, it's not my traditional work and I do um, still sit there and uh, do the brush work um, and uh, it takes me a lot longer because I don't have one of those um, pressure pens I'd love to get one later on down the track they're uh, extraordinarily expensive on PC I use a mouse and I've mentioned before that on my phone and tablet, I am just using a rubber nib stylus, which I don't mind because the grip on it really helps hide the hand tremors that I get. So something else that we can do, which I, um, I should point out, we take that off and we come down to our control layer here and we select our control layer. We can actually come through and we can change this now. So I'm just going to move that down. So we can press our select and I believe it is the shift button to lock. And then once we're locked, we can actually, oh, there we go, start to move, slow system. We can move that arm and we want to move that out, make it a bit bigger. So now we can change the position of the arm. And then once we generate another image and i'm going to remove that word basic maybe causing the artifacts now when we generate it we'll get a a different position 
because it is using our pose that we have here. And we'll see the uh, final result momentarily. Okay, so we can see here that our image has been rendered and we can see there is a massive difference. Like if we come up to here and we select this one here, we can see that arm is coming down. And with the change in the arm, we can see now the arm is coming across. There is still a glitch here, so it might take a couple of renders to actually do. Or if we wanted to, we could just come through and in-paint to fix it if we really like that image. So just to show, we'll move that control layer to the top and we can see that um, sort of pose there. So it's thinking the arm runs up behind, but it hasn't actually put that in. Now it's come across and it's decided, well, I'll generate uh, something that the person is holding. So we can um, generate a few different images and we can get that look from there. And even though I've moved that, we'll still get our uh, preview come up. And you can see how that actually works. We have the uh, eye position, uh, we have the head direction on the tilt. So if we move these down and change these, you can actually change the uh, tilt on the head. Um, I find it very hard to manipulate these models. I can do it uh, basically like this. Uh, but if you, um, you know, to get the better control, um, if you don't know how to do the adjustments, uh, I find having that uh, asset library of mannequins to use. And... Um, I mean, that's the key to anything which is good in any type of artwork that you're doing. Um, well, for me, with photo restorations especially, it's having a library of assets that I can actually use, um, eyes, hair, and so forth. And um, moving that over to this type of direction of a type of artwork where you want to have that control, the asset library is very, very important as well. There we go. It's a, that's definitely better. So we can hide our control there. And we can see that arm coming up, uh, holding a straw. We might want to brush that one out. We could probably come through and brush that out as well. And we can see that we're getting that um, beautiful control to it. Uh, this is, so there it is. Um, that is how to control a pose. and hopefully you liked it and hopefully you find it helpful and if you did don't forget to like subscribe and get the bell on for notifications and i will continue to um show little cre uh, creta tips and tricks uh, so you can apply it to your work that you're actually doing and i will see you in the next stream tabulous video Thank you for watching my video and sticking around to the end. If you like my videos, it'd really help me out if you could like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm to push my videos out there to more viewers, which in turn helps me and helps everyone. So thank you for watching my video and hanging around to the end, and I will see you in the next video.